Greetings, Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, San Antonio, Texas. I'm Pastor Bill Brueggemann, and uh, that's what I looked like 40 years ago. And I've heard a lot of parents say to their children, oh, look what you've done to me. <laughs> but it wasn't all your fault. Age has a lot to do with it. Those years that I was at Abiding Presence were some of the best years of my life. And I'm so grateful to God for each and every one of them and each and every one of you who were part of that wonderful ministry. Someone who is very special in that ministry is my wife, Anne. And Anne's even wearing her Abiding Presence t-shirt. And my earrings. And her earrings, earrings. yeah. So. <laughs> I was the first member of Abiding Presence Nothing, no, no one else can claim that. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, Biden presents. Yeah. Was I was a, there at your birth. That's right. <laughs> and Anne was the first member because um, when I had to go out and ring doorbells uh, to invite people to the new church, I told Anne I was going to go and we said a prayer and then I left the house, closed the door, went down the sidewalk turned around and came back and rang her doorbell. And I said yes. And she said yes. So <laughs> of <course>. as, as <laughs> she and our two daughters said yes. So now we had four members, the first four members of our little congregation. And um, I went out from that day and we rang a, I rang a lot of doorbells, almost 5,000 uh, throughout North Central um, San Antonio. We're out of several pairs of shoes. Yeah, a couple pairs of shoes with holes in them, and, uh, but that was, that was glorious. Uh, wonderful time to meet a lot of you at that time. So many memories of so many good friends, some who have even departed that we right. can always remember as being part of Abiding Presence. They helped, and uh, many are still there, and we'd love to come see you sometime. Yeah, hopefully. This... This coronavirus thing has kept us from <laughs> making the trip. Uh, we don't have it yet, thank yeah. God. But um, the um, quarantine rules and so forth don't allow us to travel. And we're over here in Georgia. Right. And it's, I like San Antonio better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we both do. But, uh, but we have grandchildren here and a daughter here and a wonderful family here. So... So we're enjoying them very much in Savannah. We want to invite you to come visit us someday. Uh, just give us a call and we've got a guest room and make room for you. One of my friends uh, from my elementary school, I, I just have to mention her because she's still an important part of Abiding Presence. She designed your big window. She was my elementary best friend and she ended up being an artist and she designed the logos, both the logos that we use. And uh, she also um, didn't know a thousand miles away, she lived in Pennsylvania, that she drew a map of where Abiding Presence was. So it just had to use all the logos that Madeline Mrzinski sent to us. Right. And uh, you can't see it probably from here, but uh, you have lots of them around the church. And basically, uh, somebody called it a sloppy cross because the one bar of the cross goes down, but it isn't sloppy. It's a depiction of the Holy Spirit. There's the Spirit of God uh, in the crook of the arm of the cross, and the eye of the, do of the, of the dove is the location of the, of the church. And so, that was Madeline's idea. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't no, forget Madeline. There was nobody else had any symbol for an abiding presence. And I want to tell you a little bit about the name abiding presence because uh, some people have uh, maligned that history a little bit. And I just want to get it straight. I had served two, two inner city parishes prior to coming to San Antonio. And the first was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And the second was in Houston, Texas. Both congregations in their history at one time had been strong, vital congregations. But as it happens a lot in cities, and probably will happen someday in San Antonio too, the neighborhoods change, populations change. And so the, the white congregation that the, they had at those times in both those places were displaced by African Americans who had moved into the community, and uh, the church went downhill. 
Uh, it took an awful lot of work and money and effort on the part of the national church to get them going again. And uh, we were happy and proud to be part of that process. But when I, th I had to give a name for Abiding Presence and I didn't know what to call the new church, what it should be. I had to give the bishop, Bishop Wahlberg, uh, three names. And I'm not gonna tell you what the other two were because you might like them better. I, I don't think you would, but anyhow. Um, one, one of them was Immaculate Conception uh, Lutheran Church, and the other one was uh, St. John's by the gas station Lutheran Church, and, and Abiding Presence. And fortunately, uh, Bishop Wahlberg chose Abiding Presence. Um, the reason for the name is because I wanted a name that depicted the future of the church. And here, 40 years later, you're fulfilling that future. The dream was that Abiding Presence would become a congregation that would be stable, stay there in that community no matter what changes take place in the neighborhood of San Antonio. Stay there and not only be there, but also be a representation of God's love and grace that's alive and well in that community. And you've done that so beautifully well for 40 years. And I thank God for each one of you who have been part of that whole process. It's a wonderful name, Abiding Presence. And it originally, it didn't originate with me. I had gone to Gettysburg Seminary and the chapel at Gettysburg was called the Church of the Abiding Presence. And as you probably know, uh, Texas um, Lutheran University now also has a chapel called of the Abiding Presence. So it's a wonderful name. I'm glad that you're holding it up and keeping it going. Mm. Uh, just a side light on this. Um, one of the things that happened, one of the first comments made there at Abiding Presence was from our daughter, Christine, who said, Daddy could never build a church. <laughs> she actually said, Daddy can't build anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, before, before we left Houston, I had tried to build a dog house for my dog, and it was a disaster. <laughs> so Christine, who was probably about five years old at the time, said, uh, Daddy can't build anything. And she was absolutely right. Christine's daddy did not build anything. God did. It was amazing to be part of that whole process, to see God at work. That logo of the abiding presence with the, uh, the map of San Pedro and Oak Shadows is just one example. But I can't tell you the number of people I talked to as I was ringing doorbells who, who would say, you know, we've just been talking about, we need to find a church. 80% of the people who became part of the original group of abiding presence, 80%, had not been attending anywhere at any church for many years. So it was a new start, but God was already working in their hearts to make it happen. And so it was a great and wonderful experience. I only got bit three times and, uh, and had the door slammed in my face two or three times, but it was still a wonderful, exciting experience. I enjoyed it and I still have wonderful memories of it to this day. Glad we did it. In inner city ministry, uh, you do a lot of flying by the seat of your pants. And so when I came to San Antonio, I was really thrilled when the LCA gave me a book and said, do this and you'll be successful. So I took that book, I followed it to the T, and I added what I had learned from community organizing classes I had taken in the inner city to other things like that to make the, the church new and different. Um, my dream was that Abiding Presence would be a place of grace for all people, and you have lived, lived, lived that out in your entire 40 years. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> a place of grace. And you have done it much better than I ever would have dreamed, so it's wonderful what you are doing. The dream was that you would be a congregation serving San Antonio on and on and on and on through the generations, and you've done that. And I thank God for you. I thank God for all the pastors who followed me. I thank God for all the members of the church councils and committees and standing committees that, that were there at the time and followed in the years after. You have done a wonderful job. And I know God is proud of each and every one of you. I am too. Um, God has blessed us with many years. We've been back to see Abiding Presence on several occasions. And uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful reunion every time we come back. 
I look forward to being there again with you sometime in the future when we are allowed to travel. And meanwhile, I pray God's blessings upon you for the next 40 or better yet, 400 years. And may God bless each and every one of them with his abiding presence. God bless you.